What's going on guys? Today I'm doing a review on this BRS Nano Dashi. This little itty bitty guy right here. All right, Blade Runner Systems. Um, I know a lot of you guys are waiting for the Replicant review. That is definitely on the way. I started using this knife before I started uh, flipping and using the Replicant, so that's why I'm doing this video first. But uh, stay tuned, I'm still gonna do a review on that. So this is an interesting little uh, EDC knife. Let's see the uh, packaging it came with. All right, little uh, kind of clamshell, but I like that it's reusable. I don't have to rip it open in case you do want to save packaging. It says it is a micro EDC multi-purpose edge tool. Has S30V steel, very nice. Has an exoskeleton micro sheath system for minimalist carry with pocket clip. G10 scales and black oxide blade coat. Very nice. So, uh, yeah, I EDC this little guy a bunch. I actually really like it. It's very cool. It is a tiny little Kiridashi style blade. Uh, Japanese and influence. Tiny little actual cutting edge. It's only 7 8 inches long. But it has a wicked little point on it. All right. But even though this thing is teeny tiny, it is still very comfortable to use and very purposeful. All right, again, as you saw from the packaging, this sports an S30V stainless steel, all right, which is very nice, very high quality. All right, there's a little lanyard hole on the bottom. You can see this actually has, even though it's so small, it has, you know, double-sided scales, which is interesting. Usually knives this small don't have scales on both sides. A lot of times there's no scales at all, or it'll be one-sided. Let's take a closer look with the knife inside the sheath here. This one is gray, although they also offer a black one and I believe a green one. Cool little sheath system. There's a little tab that's actually integrated into the sheath. It's a piece of G10. You see there's a, a slot cut out there, okay? That allows this to move up ever so slightly, all right? And this hooks down a little bit. As you can see, the jimping on the back of the knife as you put this knife inside the sheath, it'll rub towards the spine and then kind of snap down makes a very secure uh, sheath, all right? It's a nice, uh, nice change of pace as opposed to just being a molded Kydex. I believe the first gen was something very similar to that and they wanted to change it. And I actually really like this a lot. Naturally, when you go to grab the knife, your thumb pushes forward. You're supposed to push forward and up, but in just pushing forward, I, it, I find that it works totally fine. I don't have to actually lift up. So as I'm pushing forward, it automatically lifts up and of course release the knife from the sheath. Very interesting little design, I like that. I also like how the, the sheath is incorporated into the design of the handles. You can see there's these diagonal patterns on here and same thing with the actual scales. All right, so it kind of just molds right into it. When it's together, it looks like one piece. It doesn't really look like a knife sheath and a knife. You know, if you were to carry this on the neck, it would look like some kind of piece of artwork or something. I think a lot of people really wouldn't know this is a knife as opposed to a lot of different neck knives that I happen to carry. I did not carry this as a knife. I do like that there's an integrated pocket clip on here. Um, I don't believe this is swappable. That might be something nice for a future generation, just to be able to you know, switch this around for personal preference. I had no problems with it. I actually carried this mostly in the fifth pocket in my pants. I also carried it in basketball shorts. The one thing I will say is that it has a lot of grip because of these cutouts. It's the same on the other side, so I'll show you this side, but these cutouts offer a lot of grip here. So in softer material like basketball shorts, you know, or thinner material, I found it really grabbed the pocket. Okay, so when this is clipped inside the pocket, and there's a deep concealed clip, as you can see there, you don't see anything. But when you go to pull this out, it really grabbed as opposed to the thicker, you know, pants material or pocket material on cargos and denim jeans. So, uh, yeah, just something to note there. But it, because of its compact size, you can clip this uh, on some webbing, on your bags, you can put it pretty much anywhere. But uh, like I said, I mean, you can put this right directly, you know, through the belt if you wanted to as a backup knife or something, you know, tucked away in the pants around the waist. That's a pretty cool idea. You can put this clip to the back pocket as a, a spare knife. I did that one day. I usually don't use my back left pocket for anything other than like a handkerchief, but I did carry it one day just like that to see how it was. And I was paranoid, to be honest, most of the day I kept reaching back there to feel it to make sure it wasn't gonna fall off, but totally secure again because of the grip here on the G10. It does hold and bites very nicely when it is clipped into the pocket. Um, no real issues as far as uh, carry. Uh, pulling it out because of these deep conceal, you think like, oh, there's not much to grab. As soon as you grab the pocket clip and just support the back with your thumb, it pulls right out. And then the only issue, obviously, carrying in the pocket is where do you put the sheath, you know, once you are using the knife. You either slip it back in the pocket, keep it in the other hand or whatever. Not a huge deal. I mean, it's the same issue you'd have with any knife, really. If you wanted to, you could put a little piece of bank line or tether cord 
uh, around the pocket clip itself, just a short run of it, and um, loop that through your, your belt loop on your pants. So this can be clipped in your pocket, but it's really attached to your pants. And when you pull it out and push this off, you know, the, the sheath will be attached and it'll drop free. So you have the knife one-handed. And obviously you're gonna need two hands again to put this back in. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting design though. It is a huge uh, lanyard hole on the bottom, which is nice if you didn't wanna add a lanyard because it is smaller. It's, uh, even though it's tiny, and this thing is tiny, it's only uh, three and three eighths inches overall. And again, just under an inch on our cutting edge here. Chisel ground blade, right? Uh, it's very purposeful and it's extremely comfortable. I was actually quite surprised how comfortable this thing is. It really, really locks in the hands. You can see there's a little bit of a finger troll here, but heavy, deep, wide jimping, both in the choil as well as on the spine here. Okay, so the finger and the thumb, just like this, it really locks in. Even if I didn't have a grip on anything else, I'd still be you know, very comfortable in using that. You can see it's basically a three finger grip here, but uh, just really, really nice. Um, you would think it's pretty limiting. You know, it's such a tiny blade. What am I gonna do with that? What can I possibly cut with that? Most things, believe it or not, most EDC chores, regular cutting tasks, this is totally fine. The number one thing a lot of you guys use your knives for, opening boxes of more knives, right? If you're a knifeaholic, that's what you're doing a lot of times, right? More packages, more knives. Uh, as far as cardboard, I grabbed a little piece here just to show you this. My only issue with this knife whatsoever is the fact that it is a thicker spine here, okay? It's 5 30 seconds of an inch. And because the grind, is pretty close to where the edge is. You don't have a whole lot of area to really thin that edge out, okay? So although it is razor sharp, and it's extremely easy to sharpen, this is literally probably the easiest knife to sharpen that you'll ever have. I don't think of anything that's quite easier, being chisel ground and also being so small. Just hit this on a stone, couple passes, boom. I mean, it's really that simple. But um, because it, it's thick, you get a little bit of that wedge action. It's not a huge deal, but it's something I definitely noticed. There's a little bit more resistance compared to a lot of other knives I've been using lately. Uh, and especially compared to a lot of smaller knives like this, generally speaking, they have a traditional you know, double grind on it. But uh, from the edge here, I'll show you from a clean edge, you can see it's a little bit hard to get that in there to cut. Again, just because of the, the wedge effect, even though it's nice and sharp, it will cut, but it's a little bit more difficult. However, we have such an acute point on this that piercing is, is really so effortless. Very, very acute point. So for example, opening a box or something, pierce right in and then drag along, okay? And it makes a nice, good cut there. So you don't really have to worry too much as far as like cutting through your cardboard and your tape and such. So because it's so small, I would recommend maybe future generations um, either having a double ground blade, you know, a more traditional, you know, flat ground blade, uh, or just a very slightly thinner stock. I wouldn't go super thin because it's already, you know, pretty small. That's one thing too, is that it, it might have to do with the comfort as well. And also strength, the thinner it gets, the thinner that point is, the more delicate that point could be. Okay. So it, it is a compromise there. Um, as it sits right now, you could be pretty rough with it. You don't really have to worry how I'm suggesting they make future you know, versions of this knife. It may be way more fragile. People may have the tip snapping off and have issues and such. So, you know, there's always a reason behind everything. Um, but again, having something in such a small package, there's always gonna be, you know, something that is, uh, you know, left wanting. And that's, that's for me, that's what I want. I want kind of a thinner stock here, but like I said, you do compromise strength a little bit by doing that. Um, one suggestion though, for definitely a future uh, version of this knife, if possible, is a cheaper steel. And you almost never hear me say that. Have you ever heard me say in a knife review, oh, I love this knife, but the steel's too good. Here's why. This knife costs 70 bucks. Now with S30V, all right, being a nice little, you know, semi-production, semi-custom blade, very collectible, obviously Blade Runner Systems, very hot in the, the knife industry right now. I mean, their, their battle songs are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Little uh, cat out of the bag for the replicant review, but very, very high-end stuff, okay? So they make something like this, you know, use a, a tip top blade steel like S30V and it's still reasonably priced at $70 for what it is. I mean, compare this to say the Peter Atwood tools. Those things were easily over a hundred bucks and uh, anything with a, an edge on it would be 200 plus, you know, especially now they're super collectible. So little EDC tools like this, I mean, it's not unreasonable to uh, suggest 70 bucks for something like this. But that being said, 
it's going to hit a smaller market because of that. And I really think there should be a, I still want to see this in S30V in the future, but I'd recommend the exact same knife, but also in something like AUS8 or similar for like the 20 or $30 price range, just to reach more people out there. Cause I think there are so many people that would like something like this, but uh, you know, some people may not want to shell out the 70 bucks for the super premium steel. So, and a lot of people might say, eh, S30V is not super premium. Well, it is a premium steel. It is a very high performance stainless, all right? And one of my favorites. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's really my only suggestion. Um, my only gripe is it being slightly on the thick side for such a small ground blade. But again, you know, uh, the, the catch to that or caveat to that is that you don't want to lose too much strength. So maybe it's not a good idea to make a, a thinner stock on this or a thinner edge. It is nice and sharp, it will get the job done. It's not gonna perform the same as most of your, you know, Foley knives, obviously because of the blade limitation, but again, also because of that grind and that little bit of wedge effect, as you saw with the, uh, the cardboard there. But it is, uh, it's definitely pointy and it's definitely sharp. It's a very cool backup blade and just a, a fun little knife, you know, definitely for the collectors, but it is quite usable as well. So uh, I like it a lot. Like I said, those are pretty much my only suggestions. Um, just a, a cheaper version. But if you do a cheaper version, I'm talking to, of course, the people you know who run BRS. Um, if you do a cheaper version, I would like to still see this available too, because there's plenty of guys that obviously are getting these and loving these things with the S30V, and they have no problem forking over 70 bucks for one. But if you had a cheaper version in addition to this, A+. plus. I think, uh, like I said, just reach a whole new bracket of audience that really wants one, but you know doesn't want to pay more than 30 bucks for something like this. In the meantime, let me know if you guys happen to have a Nano Dashi and what you think of yours, maybe other uses, other places to clip this little guy. But I mean, it's just really cool. It's a lot of detail, like I said, in such a, a little knife, you know? There's a lot of uh, cheapo little knives in the market like this that are like 10 bucks or so, and they're always fun to play with and such, but this one's actually very high quality. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll see you soon. Take care.